today's video um, I wanted to make about self-care. I know it's like a huge thing on social media and things like that and everyone and their moms talking about self-care. Um, but I guess it's something that I've embraced over the last few years, actually more so over the last few months, maybe the last few years a little bit, and then over the last few months kind of taking it a bit more seriously and really thinking about what it means to have your cup full so that you can be there um, more for other people. I think oftentimes we get caught up in trying to do too many things in today's world, working and being a mom and um, being a partner and having friends and social life and events and I don't know, hobbies, whatever the case. And then you realize that it's been seven weeks since the last time that, I don't know, you looked at yourself in the eyes in the mirror and like really took a deep breath. I think at least for me, I know that I'm in need of a bit of tuning in and a bit of self-care when I start to notice that my mood is becoming very irritable. Um, and that's really like the biggest sign for me. My patience levels go down and I'm just not that fun to be around. It's like I, I can be with somebody and then I really just would rather be in my head and like tuned out because I just don't have enough energy anymore to give to people. So that's when I know I definitely need, okay, let me just pull the brakes. I need time to myself. I need time to recharge. And also a little bit of pampering because why not? You deserve it. I deserve it. We deserve it. I've got some notes here so I don't forget. Um, the five, because okay, so I'm hella busy all the freaking time and I don't necessarily have the luxury of going to Bali for a week for some self-care or paying a thousand dollars for a yoga retreat for self-care. So self-care, and I'm assuming that most of the people watching this aren't in that position either to just like take off to a different country and call that self-care and be fabulous traveling the world and then posting it on your Instagram for everyone to be jealous. Keeping it trail. The things that I do for self-care are pretty easily achievable by anybody who has like anywhere from three dollars and a little bit of time to zero dollars and a little bit of time to 25 bucks and a little bit of time it mostly just requires a little bit of time and then anywhere from zero dollars to like 150 if you want to go balls out the first thing that i have that's easy Ooh, maybe let me get them actually <laughs> Thing to the table. I've got them here. One of the things that I do for self-care that is cheap, uh, relatively easy. I can do it with other people around, which isn't ideal because usually if you want to take some time for yourself, it's just by yourself. That's like ideal times. But if you are, I don't know, running around the house and doing things like this is something that you can do like while doing the dishes or I don't know, reading books to your kid at night or whatever the case. So face masks, they're very cheap. These I think were, I got them from like some cool little Japanese store in the mall. And I think they were like three bucks each or like 250. So they're probably not the best for the environment. I'm not really sure what all of the ethical standards are for these masks. I just found them and they're one of those, they're one of those, I don't know if you can see from there, that it's like, oh, but there are those types that like, you look like, um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre dude because you look like you've got flesh like peeling off of your skin those like really gross looking ones these are what they are and um, they're great so you just leave them on for I think 15 to 20 minutes and you are not meant to wash them off so you put them on you kind of rinse your face a little bit you put them on you leave them on you can do whatever you want you can chill and relax or you can read books to your kid or you can do the dishes or you can take notes whatever you can study XYZ and um, and then you just take them off and you rub the excess into your skin and you feel delicious and moisturized that's just a quick and cheap little pampering thing that you can do for yourself um, that I'm a big fan of because I can buy a buttload at a time because I hate going to the shops so I buy a lot I load up and I do these whenever I remember to take care of myself another one that I actually don't do very often I don't do hardly ever, but when I do do it, I always think, why don't I do this more? 
and that's getting my nails done. It's one of those things that you kind of, it's like if you get your shoes shined and then you feel like a million bucks walking down the street, you sort of underestimate how little things can make a big difference. And, um, and it's the same thing with the face masks. Like they're so simple, but you put them on and you, maybe it's like partly placebo, but you literally do feel better afterwards. So it's the same thing with my nails. I, they were like, it's just so nice to look down and feel like they look pretty and then I feel prettier and then I feel better as a result. And it's not like you're dependent on pretty nails to feel good about yourself, but it accentuates a good feeling when you feel like you're taking care of yourself and getting your nails in is one of them. And I know some of you people watching this are gonna say, well, I don't really like to get my nails done. I'm not the kind of person, blah, blah, blah. I don't really consider myself the kind of person that gets her nails done. I've gotten acrylics like five times in my entire life maybe. And I don't necessarily recommend it because it fucks up your nails really badly. But even just going to the nail salon, the, the idea of just taking the time like carving an hour out of your day to take yourself somewhere that's just for you, even if it's just to get, you know, a nice hand massage and manicure and like clear whatever on your nail, like it's worth it because you do feel pampered and you do feel good afterwards. And then you look down at your hands and they don't look like, I don't know, um, eagle claws and it's quite nice. The next one is kind of going up the ranks a little bit of pricing and time, although time maybe, yes, it's a little bit more time consuming going to the sauna. So, or going to a spa in general. So now we're going, we're taking it from like, you can go to a sauna and that takes, you know, you can go to a sauna for like 45 minutes and then showering and whatever, all that stuff. You're looking at like probably an hour and a half of your day gone that you have to schedule in for this thing. And um, it's not there, very expensive depending on where you go. If you just want to book yourself an appointment in like some yoga studios have them, I go to one um, sometimes I've only gone twice to two sessions and I went to one today, which is why I'm inspired to do the self care thing because I've got my nails done. I've, um, gone to a sauna and I went to my kids, one of my kids, um, one of my kids, I only have one kid. I went to my kids, uh, friend's birthday party afterwards. And it was funny because like immediately one of, um, her friend's parents was saying like, wow, you look so refreshed and da da da. And I was like, yeah, because I've just come from the sauna. Bowling! And it was 45 minutes of my day, so fuck all. And, um, and plus like the showering afterwards, which was another 20 minutes or whatever. And then you just sit in there for 45 minutes and you can, depending on where you go, you can plug in your iPod and listen to a podcast. You can listen to music. You can bring in books. Um, you can bring a journal. It's just like time to yourself and for those of you who like to spend time by yourselves, that's me, it's just sacred. And I think even if you don't like spending that much time by yourself, it's important to carve out time for yourself, even if you are a very people-oriented person. I think everybody needs a little bit of time to themselves. Whether you really, really seek it out or not, that time, it's like, like you need time to replenish and kind of get in touch with yourself again, regardless of extroversion, introversion, people oriented or not so people oriented or whatever the case. That's a really good one, I think. There's so many benefits to an infrared sauna. That's the one that I went to in particular is an infrared sauna. It could be any sauna, but infrared saunas do have really great health benefits. The one that I went to, I think, I can't remember how much each session was, but I got a special that there's 45 minute sessions. You get three sessions, 45 minutes each, and the whole lot was 99 bucks. I'm like, Come on, that's so good. And whatever, you just have to research in your area, places that have infrared saunas or just a sauna. The idea is basically just take yourself to a place, whether it's a sauna or even a steam room or whatever, just like take yourself somewhere where you have, there's health benefits behind it. So the infrared sauna has hella health benefits, hella health benefits, and I'll name you a few. So there's inflammation, it helps with inflammation. Um, it helps relieve stress and fatigue. So that correlates as well with your mood. Um, it helps sore muscles. So I guess that's also with inflammation. So anything that's joint related, muscle related, it helps soothe any pain. Um, it helps with your skin. It boosts your immune system. It increases your metabolism and 
it's relaxing. That's a given. All of those benefits in just a short 45 minute session, that's not really that expensive and it's worth it. You're worth it. That's the thing, that are like, that's like the message that I wanna drive home. You are worth taking an hour and a half out of your day to go pamper yourself for just a little bit of money and a little bit of time and you'll feel really good afterwards. I know, speaking from experience, I feel quite great right now. Boo 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 boo. <sighs> Going back down the ladder of price, so we were down the ladder, then we went up a little bit for saunas, then we're going back down, a walk in nature. A walk in nature. So good. There are so many health benefits to spending time in nature. I'm not gonna guide you through all of them because I'm not a health channel, nor do I really care. You can just Google it. But um, there's negative ions in trees and in running water, and negative ions have a really great effect on your mood and your whatever the fuck the thing is called that makes you happy. Whatever. Negative ions are really good for your mood and um, there's just, I'm not even gonna list them because it's, you, you can do that. You do your homework. I'm just gonna lead you to the water. But yeah, spending time in nature. So if there's a park around your area, and again, it doesn't have to be a rainforest. You don't have to drive three hours. Like, let's not make self-care a headache and something that you have to plan for three weeks in advance. You can literally just go, honey, I want a break. Let me go to the park. I don't know, however, like across the street or 20 minutes away. And I'm just going to go there for an hour, at least a couple hours, a half an hour, whatever suits you and just have a nice quiet walk in nature. There's lots of benefits to it. And the one thing that I recommend is that you do not get on social media or on your phone during this walk. It's very fucking hard. I know. But don't. That's all. It kind of defeats the purpose of taking care of yourself and tuning into yourself and like tuning into nature and like feeling that like magic that listening to the trees brings if you're stuck looking on Instagram. On, I don't know, at some bullshit, whatever. Just don't. Maybe bring a camera. Maybe bring a journal so you can like stop and like sit on a tree stump and like stare off into the sky. Maybe like observe some birds, write down your thoughts, listen to like running water. It's fucking great. Uh, just do it. <laughs> it's really good for you. <laughs> Spending time in nature. I certainly don't do it enough, but I will say I live very close to a park and I take my dog on walks. Sometimes I go by myself, sometimes I go with her. And whether it's at night, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the afternoon, it's really nice. It's just, it's always nice, especially at night. There's no one at the park, and I think you can already tell, I don't really like being around people a lot of the times. I like things that aren't super busy. So I tend to avoid going to the park when it's like, there's a footy game on, that's like my worst nightmare. Um, when there's like 50,000 families at the playground, not my thing, but I will go when, it, early in the morning when there's no one there, or late at night when there's definitely no one there. No one's walking their dog at 10.30 at night. My mom should probably know that because then she'll be really worried that I'm walking by myself at 10.30 at night. And it's not even like you have to be surrounded by like rows and rows and rows of trees and a river and like all these things. Not all of the stars have to align for this park to be perfect. It's literally just like take yourself outside, preferably not in the middle of a city with like sirens and honking aggressive people driving and like, I don't know, people pissing on the corner and whatever the case, drunk people walking around, like that's not relaxing, but just take yourself to a park that doesn't have a lot of commotion and just go for a nice walk and try not to be on your phone. In fact, just don't be on your phone. Don't even take it with you or put it on silent or turn it off. I don't know, whatever. And then the last bit, that I will suggest for this number, yeah, so we're going at number five, is um, taking some time to work on a hobby. So this is a bit more self-directed. I can't tell you where to find a hobby or what hobby to choose from, but just to suggest that it's really helpful for mental health and for your own well-being to connect with something that's important to you, um, some kind of vocation that you like doing, 
and to do that quite regularly or as regularly as you can, which is hopefully more than once a year. Self-care, you shouldn't really leave until you're dying and you have no energy left and you're so irritable that nobody can speak to you because you want to snap at them. And yes, I've been there, trust me. But um, it's important to be vigilant of that and not let yourself only do any of these things once a year, like me with my nails or something. Not that I need to get my nails done all the time, but just the idea that um, it's important to do this regularly, and I'm the first to admit that I don't fucking do any of these enough, and it does get to a point where I'm so fatigued and I'm so tired and I just don't want to be around people that I go, oh, right. When was the last time that I took even an hour to myself where I'm not trying to clean up around the house or trying to like, I don't know, set up a lunch date with a friend or blah, 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 or like checking emails even. Something that's like not even that important, but it's just busy. It's like busy work um, that isn't urgent and you're just fucking doing it. I don't even know why. I'm guilty of that. But this is a good reminder for myself and I guess anybody watching that these you can you can do self-care and kind of fill your tank a little bit very easily. Not for a lot of money and not for a lot of time, but it's effective. And so the last one, yeah, so it's um carve at least, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of your day to do something that's important to you. So that could be drawing, that could be that could be watching your favorite movie. That could be journaling, that could be painting, that could be picking flowers, like that could be anything, but just making sure that you're prioritizing and you're building it into your schedule, just like you would going to the dentist or going to the doctor or going to work or taking your kid to a party or whatever things that you put in your itinerary of life, to put, put this into your itinerary as well, because it's just as important and we often just neglect it and forget it and we neglect ourselves and then before you know it we're fucking miserable and we're up to here with just life and everything and it's because we haven't actually given ourselves a break in I don't know half a year speaking for a friend so yeah we're all in this fucking struggle together let me tell you because I definitely don't do any of these things enough so I feel really great that I've been better about it, that I took myself to a sauna, that I've, you know, given myself time to be in my own company and doing the things that are important, um, that I know are important for my kind of, you know, sanity, basically. And all of these things are gonna be different depending on the kind of person you are and your makeup. So, like genetic wiring and makeup and stuff. So. Maybe self-care for you is hanging out with your friends a bunch and catching up all the time. Maybe self-care for you looks like literally not speaking to anybody for a week because you feel so fatigued, you know? Um, maybe self-care for you looks like, I don't know, going camping. Whatever the case, um, big or small, just make sure that you're prioritizing it and that you're not putting such high goals on yourself for self-care that you're actually just not doing it because you're like, oh, well, I love going camping, but when the hell can I go camping? I guess I'll never go camping and then I guess I'll never do anything for myself. That doesn't really work. Hope we all learned something here, I guess. I'd be happy to know what you find easily achievable to do in the self-care world that you practice at home, um, that isn't expensive and isn't super time consuming, but that is still filling your cup and making you feel a bit better about yourself and sort of energizing you. I mean, there's other obvious ones like going to the gym, um, going to a yoga class, going for a bike ride, like there's so many things that could count as self-care. These just happen to be my ideas of what easy self-care is because I do these on a not very regular basis, but I should do them a little bit more regularly. Feel free to put down in the comments any self-care tips that you practice at home, any self-care habits, routines um, that are cheap and um, not very time consuming that, you know, average old folks like myself and whoever else is watching can easily do and easily build into their everyday life without necessarily having, you know, to travel across the world and pay lots of money to be in some retreat. Self-care doesn't have to be huge and it's basically just getting in the habit of 
tuning in with yourself. So the better question is, what do you do to tune in with yourself so that you can fill your cup and um, show up a little bit better in the world and show up a little bit better for yourself and the people around you. Anyway, um, that's all I've got for today. I will see you next time. <laughs>